like this might sound useful. How'd you feel about being the star of my film now? Um, I don't really want to be the star of your film, James. This is my mate Chris. I've known Chris since we started school, and one way or another, we both found ourselves working down on the river. We loved the river lifestyle and everything that came with being a punt chauffeur, but so did many others, and they didn't always share our values. This end of the river is very peaceful, very calm, very gentlemanly. We have an agreement with our, with our neighbouring company that uh, they tout on this side of the bridge, and we tout on this, the other side of the bridge. Well, yesterday, um, two mobilers rocked up, uninvited, onto Silver Street Bridge where, where we work legitimately and uh, tried to start touting business. Explain what you did. Well, I immediately challenged them and I said, boys, you know, you're not welcome here. Um, we rent this piece of land here off the council um, legitimately and uh, you know, this is where we work. And uh, basically you're not welcome here and it's best you leave. And they were like, hey, uh, calm down, you're being very aggressive. And I was like, well, you know, calm down when you leave which they eventually did um, moments before the council yeah, turned up. You know, there, there, are, there are laws of the land, so to speak, like set by governments, and then there's just sort of gentlemanly conduct, you know, and sort of respect between human beings and etiquette. Yeah, exactly. And I just felt that that was, um, was bypassed. And, you know, what, the words that came out of his mouth were, business is business. That's his very words. I've heard that many times while making this film. Yeah, business is business, which basically means fuck the public, fuck punting, fuck everything, we don't care, business is business, we want money. Which is basically, if you ask me, I mean, don't want to get too deep here, but it's kind of the root of most of the problems of humanity at the moment, business is business. What, what, anything Okay, like? I can, it's, it's about, it's about, this is a life, is it, yeah. And, and it's about the arguments, the, 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 okay. OK, bus it, bus it, bus it, bus it. You ready? Yeah, sure there's, there's no rush. Hey, man, no rush, no rush. What is this big me? <laughs> All right, mate. You ready? Yeah. Yo, 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 what's up, TV? My name's Lyndon D, and basically you're here on a documentary about people making money, making money where the water, this whole world should be free. But there's people up there, do you know what I mean? Trying to stop all the people up there, trying to say, yo, stop, stop, come on a punt and make money. They don't even know how to punt, but these people here, they don't know, they forget about the natural thing in life, how we're all supposed to do it. So I'm gonna tell you how it goes like this, check it. You know what I mean? It's just like the free fe festivals. End of the day, it's just acting like animals. All they want is just paper, fuck the vapor. End of the day, it's all about the real nature. Come on, man, I free punt for free. Cause you know what, man, I come down in the place to be. I love my community, I love university. And one thing, I love Cambridge City. But some people are greedy, matter of fact. They want the money, they forget about all this and that. But you know what I mean, I'm just telling you for a reason. I will punt through the season, whether it's cold or hot. I don't give a damn, cause I know what I got is love inside. No matter what, man, I ain't here to make a profit. Thinking about that, man, I prefer to jump off it. But some people don't really understand what living like this is a real true man. But come on, man. Why you wanna make that cash? I tell you one thing, you can kiss my ass. I'll tell you reasons. I tell you a reason for why. Linda D upon the mic, that's why I freestyle on the river cam. I tell you who I am. I'm Linda D, and I don't give a damn, yo. Haggle with the customers, stick them on the boat, punt them up and down for 40 minutes. The business wipes its own ass. I'm a chauffeur. My job, what it entails, is basically going up to people on the street, asking them very nicely if they'd like to go punting, then taking them out on a punt tour. You want to go punting, madam? Are you punting today, folks? River tour today, folks. I have to go punting today, guys. Punting today, maybe? Hello, guys. Would you like to buy any small children today? Are you going punting as well? So you're going to come punting today? I have to go punting today. River tour, 45 minutes of bliss. A romantic <laughs> river cruise. I've worked on the river since I was 17. These photos were taken on my first day. 
I was originally hired as a punt chauffeur by Scudamore's, the largest punting company in Cambridge. And as far as I was concerned, it was the best job in the world. Scudamore's was the oldest company on the river and was founded during a different era in Cambridge, when punting was a preserve of the university elite. I was a tour guide and took great pride in punting people through the heart of Cambridge University. For many centuries, the colleges that line the riverbanks have built extraordinary buildings next to the water, seemingly competing with each other in scale and grandeur. It was a great job and we felt like we ruled the river. Our office was a stretch of the cam known as the backs. For the punting industry, there was essentially two ends of the river, Quayside and the Mill Pond. In between was a mile of the most beautiful architecture in England, but it was all private land and owned by the colleges. The only other place where you could pick up tourists legitimately was bang in the middle of the river at Trinity College. This tranquil spot was home to a crew of independent punt chauffeurs operating from their own boats. They were collectively known as the Trinity Boys and I really liked their style. On the surface, they ran a utopian socialist cooperative where everyone was equal. What's happening in Cambridge is exactly a reflection of the, the benefits and the drawbacks of globalisation. Is we, we have three to four million tourists pouring into Cambridge every year. Obviously, those of us working on the river, um, as well as other people, do really well out of it. Just a second. Can I help you, sir? The, tr the Trinity boys are essentially a load of old duffers. Um, you know, they're, 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 they're a good lot in essence. Um, they very strictly adhere to this philosophy of uh, one man, one boat. Um, they believe that um, anyone who profits off the labour of another, uh, of another man is, is, is a foul capitalist. And, and certainly they regard myself, Simon Godfrey, McNaughton, any of the sort of vaguely entrepreneurial people as um, scum. We're, we're, we're simply owner producers. We, we own our own our own means of welfare and we, we, we own our own boat and work on it. Um, that's different from people who own a boat and employ someone else to work for it. I mean, I'm sympathetic to their, to their point of view, but I think it's um, idealistic, to say the very least. Variously known as Chewbacca, the Golden Pony, or Nick My Paycheck, Nick Masaychuk's reputation preceded him. Mr. Masaychuk arrives in style. Masaychuk, I, I think he's a nice guy, interesting character, um, like his attitude on life. Nick was uh, very astute at um, optimising the money that can be made from this river. Nick had been a pioneer in the punting industry. Working for Scudamore's, he had contributed to the massive expansion in trade through his business innovations and by introducing competitive touting to the river. You know, the rules of engagement are uh, who can uh, essentially outwit one another verbally. Um, you know, you've, you've, you've got to subtly take the piss out of your opposition uh, if it comes to it um, without actually getting so hot under the collar that you're going to uh, nut someone. In those early days, Nick was the king of the quayside, and he managed Scudamore's operations down there for several years. He ran a tight ship, and dissent and competition were not tolerated. So yeah, it was a bit of a golden era, really. Um, I had uh, a bit of an autocracy running. I had a really, a really kick-ass crew. I had a very relaxed life. This is James. Oh. James, say hello to Cameron. Thank you, James. James will be our next victim. Yes. For a couple of seasons, I also worked on Quayside, but for a much smaller company. Quayside was fun, but I didn't really enjoy the cut and thrust of selling tours, especially up against Nick's crew. I just wanted to be out on the river, and luckily I was presented with the opportunity to acquire an old and derelict punt. I jumped at the chance. She was called Hobson's Choice, a Cambridge expression meaning you have no choice. When she was ship shape, I found a much more tranquil place from where to operate from called King's Bridge. This graceful bridge presented us with a reliable supply of tourists that had been visiting the college. We would hawk for business while floating around underneath. It was also next to a public park 
where one could load on and off without troubling the college. I had become what was known on the river as a mobiler, so called because we had no fixed moorings. From the age of 21, I was my own boss, and for years after, I pretty much had the bridge to myself. But in those early days, there were several other people working down there, including a couple called Simon and Emma. One thing about when you sit at King's Bridge on your own boat and you see ferry after ferry after ferry after ferry coming past you full, absolutely full, uh, you, do, you do kind of scratch your, scratch your head a little bit and think, hmm, maybe there's uh, another way of doing this which might be a little bit more profitable. Simon and Emma were married with a young son. They had started their river careers with just a single punt between them, but they seemed determined to make their mark. During their first season on King's Bridge, they had witnessed a significant development on the river when Nick Masechek, who had been sacked by Scudamores, had had to spend that summer mobiling with his crew from Jesus Green. Jesus Green was a city council-owned park and no one had worked from there before, but Nick didn't experience any problems from the council and consequently, a whole new part of the river was opened up to commercial punting. After that momentous summer, Nick went back to Quayside to work for Scudamores' rivals, Tyrrells, and spotting an opening, Simon and Emma moved to Jesus Green. I mean, Emma I quite like, but she is a mad woman. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's no doubt about that. Probably the only woman I know who has got you know, more testosterone than most men is, is Emma Wynn. Are you going punting today? Are you punting today, guys? No, thank you. Are you going punting today, no, guys? Not today, thank you. Have a lovely day. Working from Jesus Green, Simon and Emma organised themselves into a noteworthy competition. But they quickly realised that to make real money on the river, they needed more boats. In a bold and unexpected move, they spent a winter in India where they bought an entire tree and had six of the larger ferry punts built for the new season. Simon and Emma launched their boats the following spring. Over the next few years, business boomed and more and more people started working independently from the park. The punting industry had become a free-for-all and there were more touts on the street than ever before. Now, while the mobile is working from Jesus Green may have been making more money, I still preferred working up at King's Bridge, one man, one boat style. For several seasons, I worked there mostly alone but in later years, I was joined occasionally by my friend Dylan. Dylan probably has the honour of being the most photographed punter on the River Cam. He was a hopeless romantic and was more like me than any of the other mobilers down on Jesus Green. Hello. Would anyone like to come punting, have a tour of the river, see all the other colleges? I offer the best prices in town. You won't get a better price anywhere else. The touts are known to be somewhat of a pest in Cambridge. This is also why I've chosen to work on the bridge here because I'm not getting in people's way. I'm just part of the view. Most people feel rather imposed when they walk down a street and get asked 10 times if they want to go punting. But how's the tout to know? He's only asked them once. The free-for-all down on Jesus Green has started to raise eyebrows in the city council and the local press also started to take an interest. But it wasn't just the citizens of Cambridge that suffered due to the punting industry. Any regrets about working on the river? Yeah, yeah, I think, I think it has a large... I think it's had a large um, influence over the, my, the deterioration of my marriage. I think the energy and the effort that goes in has absorbed me personally for a number of years and um, that's definitely uh, a regret of mine, maybe. Simon and Emma's splitting up coincided with Scudamore's buying out their main competitors' Tyrrells. Once again, Nick Masechek was out of a job. Simon then teamed up with Nick, and Emma was left out in the cold to work on her own and in competition with her ex-husband. By now, there were several factions operating from Quayside, but they were united by a shared enemy, Scudamores. 
try not to make him angry. Go on the river for five pounds each. If you do want to do it for five pounds, we can. If you can do four pounds, then do it for four pounds. Hunt tours down at the green, three pounds. This man has just volunteered <laughs> two pounds each. That is an offer that's hard to refuse. No lower than three. Two, I think, is fair enough. Um, all summer, uh, Nick Masejcik, um has dirtied price, prices, undercut tickets, and basically bullied my staff. Nick just seems incapable of, of being decent, is probably the best word. I'm standing directly outside their moorings and touting their business as they do to us on a daily basis, stand directly outside our moorings and steal our business. All right, mate, so he's still down there, is he? And what have we lost? <laughs> Lower it to what? To how much? Yeah, he's just being a twat. Why is he doing it? I don't know why he's doing it, I mean, um, perhaps he is concerned about the size of his penis. The point is not to accommodate the general public with a discount. The point is to uh, screw things up. Looks like Simon's at it. Well, look, talk to your boss then. Talk to him. Hunting, in theory, should be done by Cambridge University students in boaters, shirts and waistcoats. Not done by the riffraff of Cambridge City Centre. The following winter, several of the mobilers that had started working that summer as touts inevitably wanted to get their own boats. By the time the new season started, there were eight new ferries operating from Jesus Green, with a capacity to take an extra 100 people per hour out on the river. Unprecedented numbers of people were now working in the punting industry, and the town was teeming with touts. Competition is healthy for a company to have. If there's no competition, staff get lazy. What are you doing anyway? Just got a little leak in the boat, which has happened since we started renting it. Well, we didn't use this boat yesterday because it leaks too much. But today we're going for it. Fuck the customers, all about profit today. It's all about profit. Money, money, money. For me, it was depressing to see that rather than working their own punts, one man to one boat, most of these new mobilers were establishing themselves as small companies. The business model was simple. There was a steady supply of youngsters more than happy to push a tour for 10 pounds a go. And the touts were paid around 30% of the business they brought in. If they didn't get any business, they weren't paid. So on a good day, if the boat owners touted all of their own customers, they could make around £100 an hour per boat. Well, I mean, I think, you know, proliferation, oversaturation, if you like, is um, the main threat. You know, I don't think there's going to be enough business to go around. You know, I think the tourists are going to get a little bit pissed off when they've been touted to death, really. Basically, something that's uh, quite a free and open market is now being completely abused. What people are trying to do is, is stake their claim as, uh, as big players on the river. The most obvious thing to do is just ban touting. You know, I think there has been a proliferation of freelancers to such an extent that there's more competition than there ever was. I think some of the lads have gone up to King's Parade because it's uh, apparently a good place to tout. It's kind of a hub, a hub of tourist action. Hello, folks. Are you coming punting today? The people who work at Trinity, they. Pete Customs have to walk down a little alleyway over there, so obviously if we're here, they were intercepting a proportion of their custom, which wasn't previously intercepted. Yeah. It is a choice to come up here, but it's a choice that's largely been dictated by, um, by scooter malls and by the fact that, that I have a mortgage and that um, you know, I've got bills to pay, basically, so, so that's it. There were ten mobile touts on King's Parade. I counted them. Yeah, there was ten. It's quite it's rude. rude. Yeah. It is. It's just rude. People who are mostly affected by people up there are us. Godfrey went with, uh, I've been forced here because Scudder Moors are doing one pound a person trips. From what does he think is actually going to happen? Are Scudder Moors not going to put chauffeurs up on King's Parade as soon as he does? Tomorrow or next week, Scudder Moors are going to have chauffeurs up there as well and they're going to be up there still undercutting him. So all he's done is, is snowball the whole thing up to the next level. 
who's losing out? Not Scudamore's, not him, us. So if everyone went back to their own punt stations, the same tourists, if they want to go punting, are going to go punting. So everyone's going to get the same, you know, slice of the cake. There's far too many boats, there's far too many towns, and there's far too many people trying to cream this river. Uh, the Trinity boys were, were, were none too impressed today. I don't give a toss. I really don't. Why would I care about that? I mean, are they going to make financial contributions to my household? Are they? Are they going to, you know, give my daughter pocket money? They're not, are they? So, you know, that really is just sour grapes, isn't it? If they actually got off their arse to stop doing the Guardian crossword, then um, they might actually make a living, you know? Uh, if there is a certain amount of political fallout from sending uh, touts into the town centre, then so be it. I don't really care. I don't think touting in and of itself is an offensive act, certainly not conducted by my staff. Something that I was always hoping was that we'd actually unite and actually become like the mobile is actually, you know, as the name. And that is a group that will work as some sort of union of punters almost. It's a little bit socialist in my kind of outlook though, so. It's never gonna happen though, is it? Because there's too much money involved. Exactly, there's too much money. And yeah, the guys with the boats don't want to share. I, I stand around and wait for the right time to meddle, and then I meddle. So I'm a meddler, basically, so the familiarity breeds contempt. Uh, sorry, that was a stink bomb coming over. No, I just, uh, I just, I'm just tired. I'm tired of being in a kindergarten. You know, no, I've got to get out. I've got to get out of here. Really, I do. I mean, look, look around you. You've seen the sort of the uh, play school antics, the stink bombs, the miscreants, in general. They're just a bunch of feckwits. I mean, this place, it's just gone to the dogs, James. Really, I need to get out. I can understand why corporate structure needs to be um, quite strict, quite stringent, because if you give people complete freedom, this is the result. It's a, it's a, a mess, it's anarchy. And, uh, you know, for me, I, I think I'd rather work in Burger King, where I knew exactly what was uh, required of me. And I'd, ra I'd rather be around drones, people who had no semblance of self-determination, because I think if you give them that, they... Uh, and just turn it into shit. Really, I just think the thing is uh, bankrupt, morally bankrupt. It needs to be shut down. It needs to be shut down. This river has been abandoned and has been used solely for profit. And it's, it's ruined. And that is the truth. That is the truth. I was starting to get very concerned about what was happening to the river I loved. It seemed as though a tragedy of the commons was being played out in Cambridge. Unregulated, the raw market forces driving the punting trade 
would only lead to one inevitable outcome, the ruining of our common resource, the River Cam. Towards the end of that season, as winter approached, it became clear that the council had belatedly decided to play a more active role in regulating the river. They had erected signs next to the mill pond, explicitly prohibiting commercial activity, and it seemed like they were formulating some sort of strategy to deal with the independents working from Jesus Green. Adverts appeared asking individuals to register their interest in leasing spaces on the Lamb and Moser punt station. This was to be a new council-owned landing stage right next to Jesus Green. It was the first time that the council had offered independent punters the opportunity to have a legitimate base to work from. But with no other form of consultation from the council, it provoked more questions than answers. Back on Quayside, significant numbers of mobilers were still working, despite the plummeting temperatures. It's cold, and we're still at work, hard workers. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing? All right, yeah, not so I've got a copy of that press release. Do you want to read it? What press release? The one I was telling you about last week, that the Labour put out. I'd love to read it, yeah. <laughs> Punt Wars. Sort this out by next summer, Labour says to Lib Dem Council. The regular summer encampment of independent punt operators on Jesus Green. Read it, Nick, read Ooh. it. Labour councillors have welcomed signs that the City Council is finally willing to restore the reputation of the city's greatest attraction, a punt trip on the cam on a sunny day, after years of ever-increasing problems and inaction by the City Council. And they have called for a City Council commitment that 2008 will be trouble-free. This follows repeated claims by the Lib Dem City Council that they Who have cracked the punt out problem. Touting. <laughs> <laughs> I think touting has been going on for millennia. Hasn't exactly. It? Yeah. Wherever you go, any city in the world, there are touts. Marrakesh. For all sorts of Cairo. things. Cairo. Um, Santiago. Sure. Anywhere you go. Generally, fairly sort of sordid third world cities are um, <laughs> associated with the practice, not Cambridge. I'd be amazed if anything happens, James. Really, in short, I. I I'm inclined to think it'll be much the same, business is the same as usual. Well, there's some discussion about, you know, uh, you know, putting a selection of um, mobilers onto the site at Lamamosa. You know about the plans down there, don't you? Yeah, of course, I've um, registered my interest. Have you? You well, little bugger. That, the... How can you call yourself an independent yeah. filmmaker? Listen, it's just that's, I'm in the loop. That's, I don't think I can talk to you anymore. <laughs> as the winter continued, it became increasingly apparent that the council meant business. We found out that there was going to be discussions about the mobilers at the highest levels of local government. The council wanted to stop people working from Jesus Green, but it emerged that I would also be affected by any new rules, because I too use council-owned land to load my passengers on. I went over to Emma's house to see what she thought, and I found her in a complete rage. I think that the council are very angry about what's happened. I think they're very upset. Um, it's not up to the council to regulate or to set out guidelines for an industry. It's up to the industry to set out these guidelines for themselves. It's not about my own personal gain or my own personal ego. And it's absolutely nothing to do with your ex-husband. Her divorce went particularly badly. I just wish that she wasn't... A it's quite so fixated with, I think it is a lot of it, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of it's got to do with me, right? You're dealing with people who have no limit to how much they want. Do you know what I mean? Not, they don't want Lamimosa, they want Quayside. They're not happy with running a punt and earning £30,000 a year. They want to own 10, 15 punts, which earn £30,000 each a year. They want to run a million pound company on the river. Truly, from her perspective, neither of us are, are particularly virtuous people, him in particular. We're you know, we're, we're, we're sullied with greed, and on that basis, we, we won't be invited to form a part of this kind of socialist utopia.
that will be um, the mooring at La Mimosa. This is the kind of flavour that she gives it. If you had interviewed me three years ago, I'd have said to you that Scudamore's want to monopolise the river, you know, like these other people are saying, they want to monopolise the river, they want to take the whole river, you know, but I think Scudamore's have learnt a very valuable lesson over the last couple of years. And the lesson they have learnt is that good competition is a benefit. But did she, do, I mean, does she have like a policy agenda, James, other than... Emma claims she wants to move to Cornwall, but before she leaves, sort the river out for the good of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's very magnanimous of her. She really is doing social work, isn't she? She doesn't want to line her own pockets with money. I would say Nick is grasping at straws, and whatever he can use for his own defence, he will. There's been a, a certain amount of lobbying and canvassing of the authorities to uh, create the impression that th there's a problem, touting as a problem. But is it, really? I mean, other than, you know, Granny Pridgen, or, you know, Mrs Miggins, who doesn't like being asked if she wants to go punting. Um, where's, where's the harm done? What followed was a bewildering example of what passes for local democracy. The fate of the independent punting industry would be decided over several meetings by a committee. I don't really want to be in the same room as someone, that's all right for you. Why are you so happy about all this going ahead? Um, because I think it's ruining the town. They're talking about fucking mooring licence. That's not the problem. The problem is touts on the road. We've just approved the investment. It goes to another meeting on the 8th of February. To a certain extent, this whole thing's brought the independents closer together with the prospects set for Ah, oh, bollocks, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it has a little bit. You should be worried about getting prosecuted. I've learned that when we go to council meetings, it doesn't matter what we say anyway. Nothing's changed. Nothing's happened. Nothing has happened. No new no. information. Uh, no. They didn't actually discuss it, to be honest. All rather predictable. That's what I make of it. All, all rather predictable. They just didn't really understand what they were talking about. Well, there's this mistaken belief that touting is superfluous. Was... That there's not, there wasn't even a vestige of consultation in these proceedings from start to finish. Not a vestige of consultation. After this string of confusing meetings, the City Council's strategy became clear. They were going to ban everybody from operating from the riverbank at Jesus Green and they were going to prosecute people for trespass if they continued to trade. But they were planning, as expected, to provide a limited number of licensed moorings from where independence could work. The problem was, nobody knew who would get offered a place, how many boats would be allowed, and what restrictions would be placed on the licenses. For the first time, I realised that my place in the river was also threatened. The City Council had sent round a map highlighting all of the land that they own next to the river. The small park next to King's Bridge, where I picked up my passengers, was clearly marked in pink. I wondered how long I'd be tolerated there once they shut down Jesus Green. Well, because the business is down, all the boat owners are all teaming up. We're operating as a cooperative the way they want us to operate. It's quite a nice way to work, it's quite, quite relaxed, you know, because we don't have to work against each other. And we are beginning to see the way hopefully things will be running uh, with time to come. Hopefully they'll see the people to pick. You know, what's in everybody's mind is, are they personally going to get space in the pond too? Uh, well, yeah, my opinion is that it was a forced harmony. It wasn't that they, they started working together because they, they share some utopian ideal. I, I, I'd just like to have an opportunity to work as a legitimate operator, really. I would have loved to have seen a season with us all just working together, no touts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you showing regret about chasing the you cash? You never show regret. We weren't chasing cash, we just worked as individual companies. Well, we could have clumped together, maybe. You know, these guys are fat cat capitalist wannabes. And the more cocaine that goes up the nose, the more shiny red cars they've got, the better they're, they're going to feel with their egos. If we stood together, if we all stood together and closed ranks, they would have no fucking tenants. 
and they would have no £20,000 a year revenue from that mooring, yeah? Because none of us would take it up on unfavourable terms if we actually had any binding solidarity, yeah? But unfortunately, you know, when the, sink, when the ship is sinking, some of the rats are going to get desperate and they're going to take, you know, any scraps from the table. And those rats I'm talking about are people like Emma. I don't see what we've got to argue about anymore. You know, everyone seems to be running around thinking that I've got... that I'm doing something dodgy. I think they're all paranoid. Well, to be fair, I've spoken to a few people in the river and, and they sort of say, listen, you know, if we are going to present a common front to the council, we need to say who we want to work with. And, and to be honest, they want to work in their group they've got down there and I don't think they particularly want to work with you. Mm. Does that hurt you? Not at all. No, why would it hurt me, James? Do you think I'm a child at school that's been hurt by people who aren't very nice? Do you think I should be hurt because people who aren't nice people don't like me? And what, where is Emma? Is she like not working so that she looks like the goody two-shoes? Emma thinks she's doing the right thing. You know, it's kind of commercial suicide. She's decided not to make any money. Not that she was making any anyway. You know, she was barely making a living. But then, you know, this whole exercise is about survival of the unfittest. While the rest of the river community were contemplating their future and counting down the days until they were banned, Dylan, ever the optimist, bought himself a punt. Now, I couldn't understand his decision amidst all the uncertainty, but it was good to have him on side as a fellow one man and his boat operator. Um, OK, well, I've always wanted to buy a punt. You know, ever since I started working in this industry, I realised that, you know, you're going to, first of all, make more money if you work for yourself, not someone else. Are you looking to get a spaceless pontoon? Yes, I am. If they honestly have any sense, then they will regard certain criteria as being important factors on who to decide works and represents the city, in essence. I don't have many boats. I've not been a key aspect of the, the irritation that has sort of provoked this whole change in the first place. I've continuously worked on a boat down on the water. So I've, I've not really had any involvement on the, uh, the negative aspects. I, I see no reason why I should back down quietly for the sake of, what, a group of greedy people who've frankly just created the problem. Even if I just manage to pay off the cost of the boat, I'll be a proud punt owner until the day I die. Simple as. Well, what was it like down the other end of the river? Um, they're squabbling again today. Oh, are they already? Gosh. That, uh, that has not taken long. Are you worried about any of these changes on the river? Not really. No. No. Let's see what happens. Eventually, the council sent out application forms to everyone who had registered their interest in working from the new council-run punt station. We've got um, the covering letter stating how much it costs and that it's got to be back in by the second. Ooh, late applications will not be considered. We will aim to tell you the result of your application by the 11th of April. Oh, OK. So that's all right, isn't it? A code of practice. Go practice not what to do, what to do, what to do, not not to do. Oh, here we are. Oh, right, so we will be able to tout in this area here, the Tyrrells area. So I take it that's the toilet, so we can go up to, up to there, which I'm actually sound with, because I think Scudamores have compromised, I think. We should compromise, and I think that's a good compromise. It's quite restrictive, isn't it? Not really, James. Restrictive? They're not going to be happy about it. And I think they'll think it's a problem. I think they'll have an absolute hissy fit about it. But I think it's a good compromise. Do you think they'll take it up? 
if they don't take it up, they'll be banned. So I don't think they've got much choice, really. Something has to be done to cut the wings of people who who will not behave. But what interests me, Emma, is that, you, you know, you, you seem to have taken a polar opposite position to how you were, like, you know, just four or five years ago. So would four you or five years ago? But, no, but I mean, what I'm interested in, would you say you've... No, reformed. James. Are you, are you no, a, a James. reformed No, James. No, I was the one who was all, who always had this opinion, and I was the one within a pool who was always outvoted by people who wanted to push forward their self-interest, i.e., Mr. Godfrey and Ashley Dalton. Now, the reason I'm divorced from Mr. Godfrey is our. Uh, dissimilar views on the river. Right, so uh, this is uh, the entrance to Henry's. The punt station is just down, down the river down there, down the boardwalk. Where's the line stop? Right, the line, apparently, uh, let me have a look, uh, I think we can get to here. Basically to the toilet, I think it's like across there. And where's the main business? Tantalisingly close. It's just there. <laughs> do you think someone like Nick Wasajek is going to look at that and go, right, do the maths and think, OK, it's worth it? I hope not. And I think it's absolutely disgusting what they've done. I don't know, really. I don't know what we're expected to do exactly. Just kind of... Shout. No, there's no hawking. Oh, no hawking. No hawking. No. You're not allowed to shout. You just have to stand here like a nice young man uh, and behave yourself. If I step over this line, then I'll lose my contract on La Mimosa. Okay, where are all the customers? <laughs> <laughs> the deadline for applications arrived. Along with everyone else, I'd been torn over whether to apply or not. But ultimately, I decided to keep my options open. I went to meet Dylan to discuss our applications. Yes? I have lived in Cambridge since I was seven years old. It is my home and I love it. I take pride in providing tourists and visitors with interesting and accurate river tours of historical Cambridge. It behoves responsible tour guides to give people quality products. In the hierarchy of things, I've always been on the bottom of the pile as they regard it because I've always made the least amount of money. But now I have my own boat, I feel I will be moving up a level as opposed to moving down a level, which is where a lot of the most multiple boat owners are finding an issue with this arrangement because they will noticeably be earning less money, um, whereas I think I will be earning more. All I want to do is work hard, earn a good living and be happy doing it. What time are you going to be down at the river? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, Dylan. What am I doing? This is D-Day, mate, and I need to be filming. D-Day. Oh, yeah, that's what they're calling it, isn't it? Well, it's only D-Day if they think it's the end, really. <laughs> I was born in Cambridge. Of all your applicants, I've worked for the greatest length of time, having started in 1999. That's I have... not accurate. I've worked longer than you. Have you? All right. You haven't? I started You've in worked, 97. You have worked for two weeks every year for the last 10 years. That's the you day have worked there. basically a month on the river, and here <laughs> you sit making a f frigging documentary about it. Yeah, they, they are fucking with people's lives. Yes, they are. Let's talk. Let's talk in June. Pop your application in. There's no harm done. And so that's what I'm doing. And then, you know, everyone's going to sort of slash their wrists as they realise that they've voted for something that's got no, got no future and paid an awful lot of money for the, for the benefit as well of finding that out. You know, you might well be one man, one boat, yeah? Or whatever it might be, the old school, uh, in the old school sort of camp of punting. That as a, as a moral crusade is fucking ridiculous on the basis that all people want to do is get on a punt. You look at it from the customer's point of view. They want to go punting. Largely, they couldn't give a flying fuck 
what type or style of boat they go on. I've been here for eight years and people have paid money, good money, every year and they couldn't give a shit what sort of boat they go on. They want to go punting. Get my thing out, I want you to read it. Right. See what you think. I've been working on the river now for 11 seasons. I started as a chauffeur at Scudamore's. I then worked the following two seasons at Tyrrell's before obtaining my own boat. I took a year off to repair it and I have had a commercial license for seven seasons now. I've never employed anyone to work for me and have always been with my customers from the moment I meet or tout them to the moment they leave my boat after enjoying the magnificent sights of the river. <laughs> I think I'm going to puke. Go on. Given the immense restrictions on touting that this proposal is offering, the only way this station will be viable is to reserve it for single owner operators who work for themselves, i.e. do not employ touts or pushers. Ooh, that's putting the boot in. Single boat owners operators are not the cause of problem touting. We are out on the river for most of our working day and not on the pavement hassling tourists. That is such a load of bollocks. If the station is reserved just for single boat owners, then this in itself will solve the issue of touting. Everyone sold everyone down the river. Everyone's fucked it. Is this punishment? Like, are we naughty school, school children who need to know our place? I really don't know what to do. I really, honestly, I just, I don't know what to do. Let's go and reapply for our job, Simon. There's going to be no legal battle because there's no money. No money, no battle. You sound quite defeated. Well, judicial review costs £50,000. Do you have £50,000? Spoke a little earlier, Simon Godfrey. Hello. I, uh, hi. Uh, I, I've got two copies here. And James is over here as well. He has his. I don't want to hear the word. <laughs> you don't want to hear the word punting again. See, there we go. See? Has it been quite a, has there been a lot of chat about punting in the council recently? All I've had is punting, 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 and I'm just about... Sick of it. I had three applications by this morning. I have had about dozens of plastic things upstairs. Really? How many did you receive? I am not telling you. But all I've done all day is up and down the stairs, and I'm not amused. Not from the third floor. It's not your fault. No, no, sure. No, but I just about had Jesus, That's really? Dozens and dozens. That's quite. Yeah. Dozens? No, I'm not saying, but it dozens. seems as if dozens and dozens. All I've spent all day is up and down. Is that a letter? I have the application yeah. and a letter. Yeah, that's fine. I'll put it all together. Fantastic. Thank you very right. much. Yeah, can you make sure they stay together? Do you want to. Put no, it's okay because I'm staying on all, all right, okay. together when I get upstairs. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Isn't that remarkable? I mean, seriously, that is just, that puts the icing on the cake, doesn't it? Are the city council prepared to work with us? No, they're fucking not, because they can't even be bothered to come downstairs and get an application form. I didn't expect it to come down and say, thank you, Mr. Godfrey, I've been hoping you would apply and do the right thing, and, you know, we're going to give your application serious consideration. I didn't expect her to come down and say, I really can't be fucked to walk down here and pick up your application. If that's any shred of an indicator to anyone of the, the amount of leeway that the City Council are prepared to uh, extend us on that station, then we're fucked. Despite applying for the new pontoon, I was far from sure that if I was even offered a place, I would take it. I really didn't want to tout on Quayside. That wasn't what punting was about for me. But my place in the river was also threatened. Unless I could get in with the Trinity Boys somehow, the new punt station could be my only option. For the first time, I contemplated leaving the river. My girlfriend was worried that I was becoming obsessed with the punting industry and convinced me to take a holiday. But I couldn't leave the river behind. I left a camera with Dylan and I insisted on going somewhere where I could still go punting.
While I was still away, the city council selected the tenants for the new punt station. Simon, Nick, Jules and Ashley each got two berths. I got offered a place for my boat, as did Emma for hers. Dylan's application was rejected. Okay, so they haven't let me in, um, so I'm just going to wait around until they finish and then see if I can catch them coming out, alright? It's 20 to 1 and the meeting is still going on. They, they were receptive, they did uh, accept that the Tauthing Zone was restrictive, so that's progress um, and they're going to review it inside of a week. I think we allayed a lot of fears about the types of people who are going to be working as touts uh, in the public. They're talking about that we're going to be a collective and working together, but um, you know they they completely um, shut me out of um, their plans and information and agendas that they put forward to the council and what have you. So I am pretty clueless that I am on my own. So yeah, I know it's a bit of a downer really. I finally got back from holiday and went straight down to the quayside to catch up with Nick. Um, we had a meeting last Thursday, you know about that I guess. Do you? Yeah. At, the, at the Guildhall. There was a lot of chat about relaxing the touting zone. But it was window dressing, they were just pulling our fucking leg, really. And. Um, you know, they've done nothing. They've, in fact, what they've done is bordering on bordering on an insult, really. We're allowed to have a man with an A-board and possibly a straw boater uh, inside of a, a box there, and he's allowed to make representations passively. Quite what the tourists will make of all this, I don't know. I have to say, Emma, it's nice to see you on the river. Well, it's been difficult over the last couple of years, James. Yeah. That, that I got the impression from certain councillors that working was going to maybe jeopardise your position on the pontoon. And then, of course, they handed out who was going to be on there, and all the people who carried on working were on there. So I was like, we'll get back to work then. I could have told you that, Emma. I know people are arguing, and it's all up in the air and everything, but fundamentally a goal has been achieved. I mean, you must have some apprehension about how the management of the station is going to work, and that's one of the main things that Nick was saying, the reason he didn't want to work here is because he just can't see the group of people that are working down here working in a, in a you know, a good way together, and he'd rather get out like on a high, so to speak, than sort of go down bickering and arguing, do you know what I mean? Well, if they're bickering and argu arguing, that's their lookout, you know. If Simon, Ashley and Nick and Tim and Jamie can't get along, which is probably what he's talking about, fair enough. I think there's the other side of... Um, I think you missed someone out there. Your, your good self. Oh, my good self. Well, I'm not involved in their little... Because they've already made the split. Is that my boy? My boy. What are you doing? <clears throat> I don't know. Hey, Do you want... Hi, Theo. Theo. Oh. No, keep it! I'll bring it home with you. I'm going to Rouge for a bit of breakfast. What are you... Yep, I'm going to take him up to Aaron's at 12. Mm. Do you want to come with me for a bit of breakfast? Yeah. I suppose it's all change. You have to presumably evolve or die, I guess, in this type of scenario. There are, in essence, a bunch of madmen on that station, uh, or mad women, depending on who you're referring to. 
and uh, it doesn't bode well, really. Uh, it's it's going to be a shit pit. What do you think I should do? I think you should get out whilst the going's good. Always knew it was coming. I always knew it was coming. Um, and I uh, held on for a long time. I didn't think that I'd managed to uh, manufacture a living out of thin air for so long. It's going to be very, very hard to uh, keep the peace and create a consensus uh, amongst all of those um, parties. It's going to be very hard, as you know. There's too much bad blood between the successful applicants, and therefore we need to have um, a structure, a management structure superimposed upon us. Leadership requires hierarchy. You can't have horizontal leadership, in my view. You can't have a completely democratic, horizontal, socialist utopia. It won't work. Uh, you know, there's a fundamental existential question I need to ask myself, which is, at what point do I stop investing my valuable time and thought into this project? And I think that time is really very close now. You know, we're all suffering from a, um, a shortfall of imagination. We're all um, struggling to look beyond and recognize that there is life beyond the river. So, had some great times down here, been very, very blessed. And the whole touting industry which I helped to instigate, you know, a, a, a place really rich in blaggers and scoundrels, you might say, but you know, very charming ones. Um, that whole industry is going to disappear. And I know how much it means to many, many people because they come back to Cambridge and I bump into them and they reminisce and talk about how they had some of the best days of their lives um, down here. But that whole subculture is, is going to be snuffed out. So what are you saying? You're not going to take your spots? I don't think so. Well, last time we spoke on camera, did it? You were um, in quite a sort of jovial mood, mm. about to hand in your uh, application for the La Mimosa pump station. Yeah. I, got, I was turned down for a space, which, you know, pissed me off, to say the least, because, uh, you know, there, there were more ferries allocated than originally planned. And um, they were giving multiple spaces to people. But it's not all uh, sad news, is it? No, in my case, actually, I, I ended up better off. So wh what's, wh where are you working now? Maybe you could just explain where we are and, and what's going on. We are, geographically speaking, we are in a central point on, on the River Cam. And we're stuck smack bang right in the middle of two very prestigious colleges, Trinity Hall and Trinity College. And um, we are known as the Trinity Punters. Yeah, I'm very, very lucky and I'm a very happy, happy chappy. Ladies, good afternoon. Would you care to have a relaxing boat ride? We could keep the pram next door if you like. Okay, well if you change your minds. Cheers. It's a world away from Quayside. Yep, totally different. <laughs> I say the grass is always greener, but I have to agree actually, I'm in pretty green pastures. It was a victory, wouldn't you? <laughs>
If we go back to King's Bridge, sat on King's Bridge, having a conversation, mobile, not King's Bridge, and someone comes down and says, ooh, 10 years' time, you're going to be walking into the Guild Hall and they're going to give you authorization to work down at a station down there. We'd have all laughed our heads off. Let's get into Keyside. I'm going to get over from the station. Are you going to come with me? I'm going to go and open up. That was that was right. Where have you guys been? Right. She's got her badge. Yeah. Do you want to come? Sorry, Jules. Can I go and open it up? Are you going to come? Well, that was a bit of a frosty response. Well, it's what you can expect from a group of blokes, isn't it, really? Wow. <laughs> Here Off you go, James. Go and have a... Okay. It's not bad. It's a good view. Are you happy? Yeah, happier than I've been in a long time. Yeah, probably. Are you optimistic about the future? Always. Always. I'm glad to see it, Emily. It's been a long time now that you've uh, you've been uh... under a storm cloud. Uh, yeah, well, I'm going in at ten to go and um, pay them. So I could do, I suppose. I How about the prospect of you and Emma being only two on that station for at least a week or so? Well. Uh, yeah, it's uh, quite ironic, really, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, a strange one. For what it's worth, we've been getting on a little bit better recently, so, uh, you know. But, uh, yeah. She's a little fragile, as you know. Sorry. You told me that anybody who took a space in this pontoon would do so, would only do so because they didn't have the balls to do something else. I agree with that. So are you still going to take a space? I don't know. I don't know. You know, I mean, I've got to you know, confront some very personal um, demons, if you like. You've got your little seats already, Emma. We're going to set up the big punting station. Come on, Everything about the river seemed to be changing. I'd had some of the best years of my life working down here, but it had lost its innocence. Or was it that I had lost mine? My dogmatic ideals, one man, one boat, had got me nowhere. I was really happy that the Trinity boys had taken Dylan on board, but they told me that there was no room for me. I was devastated. My options were running out. There was no way I was going to go back to working on Quayside. Mobiling from Kingsbridge was truly one of the best jobs in the world. This was my office, and I will always treasure that. But maybe punting had had its day. I'm very fatalistic about what's happened. Today. I'm, I'm really, you know, I suppose we should be grateful it took them as long as it did, right? My job here is done. In, insofar as it's been snuffed out, <laughs> you know. But we did make a bloody nuisance of ourselves for a decade, you know. We harassed the people of Cambridge um, and their conservative notions of what is seemly and what is unseemly. And it seems that making direct sales on the street is, like I said to you before, really regarded as unseemly. 
all people have ever needed to do is to say to us, uh, no thanks, not today. That's it. Nothing more to say, really. Mate, I've got to go. So uh, I'll see you soon, eh? And right. I would recommend you probably sign up. You know? And I say that for selfish reasons, because I think it'd be good to have you on board. That's assuming I go there, you know. I'll see you soon. Cheers. Cheers.